1969 Australian federal election was held in Australia on October 25, 1969. The incumbent Liberal Country Coalition government, led by Prime Minister John Gorton, won the election with a severely diminished majority over the opposition Labour Party, led by Gough Whitlam despite losing the two-party popular vote. Both major parties had changed their leaders in the run-up to the election, the first time this had occurred since 1946. This was the first and only time that a federal government won a ninth consecutive term in office. This election saw the arrival of future Prime Minister of Australia Paul Keating in Parliament, winning the safe Labour division of Blacksland. In suburban Sydney, a seat he would represent until his resignation following the Keating government's electoral defeat in 1996. The 1969 election centred on the two leaders, John Gordon and Gough Whitlam. Both were leading their respective parties in an election for the first time. Gordon had initially been very popular and was promoted as an average Aussie bloke. This image was boosted by his record of wartime service and his craggy, battered appearance. However, he gradually gained a reputation for being erratic and unnecessarily confrontational. By the time of the 1969 election campaign, his attempts to alter long-standing Liberal Party policies with regard to federal state powers, and foreign affairs had alienated the more conservative sections of the Liberal Party and various state Liberal leaders. Such as Henry Bolt and Bob Askin. Whitlam, by contrast, had reformed labour and abandoned unpopular policies such as the once-dominant White Australia policy, as well as the commitment to socialism still held by many members on the left of the party. He presented a sleek and modern image which was able to win over new voters to his cause with a policy platform including free university education and universal health insurance. Whitlam had also managed to restore and heal the party's image as an electable alternative, something that had been impossible after the Labour Party split in 1955. Under his leadership, Whitlam had also attracted back many Catholic voters who had previously dumped Labour due to its infighting and factionalism. In addition, although the coalition had won the biggest majority government in Australian history in 1966, it was increasingly seen as becoming tired and unfocused after 20 years in power. There were also growing concerns over Australia's involvement in the Vietnam War. The ALP thus went into the election with a good chance of increasing its small caucus. Despite a coalition campaign depicting Labour as a party dominated and controlled by union bosses, the result was very close. Labour became the biggest single party in the House, taking 59 seats, an 18-seat swing from 1966. It also won a bare majority of the two-party preferred vote, winning 50. 2% to the coalition's 49. 8%, a 7. One-point swing from 1966, the largest not to have resulted in a change of government. However, largely due to the Democratic Labour Party preferencing against Labour, especially in Victoria, Whitlam came up four seats short of toppling the coalition. Nonetheless, Whitlam recovered much of what Labour had lost in its severe defeat three years earlier, and put the party within striking distance of winning government three years later. Thanks for watching.